Hello, I'm Jack Bonham and welcome to the EDC Review Room where I review everyday carry, gadgets and travel gear. Today I'm going to talk about a subject that's just slightly off piste for me. It's my Royal Enfield Bullet 500 Trials. I bought the bike 12 months ago and I've clocked just over a thousand miles on it. I use the bike for general tr trips into the city to attend meetings, look for photo locations, or catch up with friends in one of the city's arrays of, array of coffee shops. I find it easy to navigate and never get snarled up in traffic. The pandemic and owning another bike has slowed me down a bit this year, hence it's done a lot less miles than I'd normally do in a year. But that said, there is no better time than to discuss my thoughts. I will discuss the running it in, the build quality of the bike and, as a number of other reviewers have mentioned, vibrations. Royal Enfield have been making variations of this motorcycle since the 1950s. I believe it's the longest production run of any motorcycle. Mine is a 500cc trials version. This was a short production run which started in 2019 and run until production of this motorcycle finished earlier this year. At the time of making this production they can still be picked up at dealers but you have to be quick as I know there's not many left. So why this bike? Well I used to own a Yamaha XSR 900 which to be honest was a bit of a hooligan. I wanted a second bike that was totally different. A motorcycle for just toodling around on. If you watched any of my other previous videos, you may know that I have a hankering for nostalgia. For trinkets and objects that represent a bygone era. Items from a non-digital analog simpler time. I like the retro bike movement. In fact, a few years ago, I used to own a motorcycle business specialising in retro motorcycle gear, well before the style became as big as it is now. The bike represents that time. It's a no rush, no thrills motorcycle. I started riding bikes about 40 years ago now, and bikes, I'll be honest, were a lot simpler then. Back then it was man and machine versus the elements and what the world decided to throw at him. No fancy gizmos or rider aids. The best technology was a fuel gauge and if you were lucky you had electronic ignition as most bikes then had a kickstart. This bike takes me back to that time. In fact this bike even has a kickstart if you prefer the nostalgia. But if you don't fancy the kickstart, it also has an electronic ignition. So let's start with build quality. Well, I've had this bike for 12 months now and I've not had any problems with it whatsoever. The bike was built on a separate production line to that of the Royal Enfield Interceptor range. I've heard tell that production of the bullet was definitely not the same as the Interceptor. That said, I've been over my bike with a fine tooth comb and it's absolutely fine. I've had no problems whatsoever. In the 12 months that I've ridden the bike, I have had no warranty claims or callbacks on the bike. What? None that I can mention. My bike is pretty standard really, with its swept up exhaust, which I think makes a nice exhaust note. On the bike, I've had an extra leather tank strap I've also added a brass filler cap from Motone Customs and just as a little added extra I added the brass tyre inflator valve covers. You probably guessed I have a thing for brass. So riding the bike, what's it like? Well, firstly, firstly I've got to say ignore all the press reviews and hype regarding vibration. It's a load of feck. Okay, you get some vibration from you. This is an engine that needs bedding in. Hence, it needs running in. It's made basically the same way as it was in the 1950s. 
It's not an instant one size fits all out of the box. It's a machine that you love and nurture and take care of. As you ride the bike and nurture it through its first 1,000 miles or so, the bike grows with you. It changes its engine tone, the rattles subside, and you let the engine grow with you. So as far as running in, well in my experience you need to give it a good 1,000 miles. Initially from starting the bike up, just let it run for a couple of minutes just to warm it up a bit and let that engine oil circulate. Remember, this bike has no rev counter, so you listen to the engine noise and the engine vibration. So, in fact, vibration in this case is your friend when running it in. Too much vibration and I'm telling you, you're running it too hard. Then, as you ease it into gear, let it run into first up to about 8 miles an hour. It's just to get you going before changing up into second. Run it in second up to probably about 15 miles an hour and then into third up to about 25 miles an hour and then into fourth. At 35 I normally change up to fifth and let run the bike, let the bike run up to about 45, 50 tops. 50 miles per hour is my ultimate max for the first 1000 miles. But don't let it run at 50 too often. Don't let the bike labour at 50 for too long. One thing I do recommend as well is have no long periods of dual carriageway runs or certainly no motorway runs, not for the first 1,000 miles at least. I found short bursts are the best way to run it in. What you've got to remember about the Royal Enfield is it just loves those A and B roads. The secret is to implement a mix of riding styles. I live in the countryside with a mix of A and B roads. These are the hunting ground of the Enfield. Slow twisties, sweeping bends with towns and villages riding up and passing you by as you go up and down the gearbox. After the first few hundred miles you will probably start to notice a difference. I did with mine. The vibrations changed. They were just not the same. They were less. After about 500 miles I took my bike in for its first service. By then, there was a noticeable difference in the engine vibration. I've done a tad over a thousand miles, and although the engine vibrations are still there, it's nowhere near what it was like from you. But that said, I like some of the vibrations. It's what the bike's about. It's a bike from a bygone era, a piece of motorcycling heritage that has now sadly all but gone. If you want silky smooth, Stick to a Japanese machine. If you want a machine with a heart and soul, then buy a Royal Enfield Bullet. Maintenance is pretty easy, just your standard checks, keep your chain lubed, and the bike won't let you down. The secret here, just keep it serviced, and the bike will look after you. From you, I gave the chrome work a good waxing with high quality wax upon delivery, and all the wheels and frame etc were coated in the silicon pro prep. This is a great treatment for the bike that keeps the destructive elements of the weather at bay. I retreat the bike about every four weeks or so, or as soon as I've washed it. The treatment process also makes the bike much easier to clean as the dirt particles don't stick to the paintwork and chrome the same. Wash the bike with a salt free wash that doesn't inhibit the paintwork. I use Muck Off, it's really good. I fully recommend prepping your bike with the Pro Preppers mentioned. It only takes about an hour and saves you loads of time on cleaning and maintenance in the future. Trust me, I've been doing it this way for years. Overall, I fully recommend this bike. It's been everything I expected from it. A few months ago I let the XSR go and I now also have a Triumph Bonneville T120. That said, my go-to bike for city runs 
and pootling up and down the lanes is all, always the Enfield. It brings a big smile to my face every time I ride it and it gets loads of attention wherever I go. It's also true, be prepared, people speak to when you have an Enfield. Anyway, that's it for this production. I expect you will see lots more of the bike as I go on testing my gear. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe, it will really help me develop the channel. If you would like to be kept informed of when I post, please hit the notification bell. I'll be back in the next couple of weeks with a product review, so in the meantime, stay safe and bye for now.